So I just barely picked up this speedrun a little bit. Um, only a few days ago I did a run just to see if I could actually complete it or not. But it's a really cool game if you're into Metroidvania style games or uh, platformers like, you know, action platformers. This is actually a really good game. Um, and it's got a lot of super sweet speedrunning tech, so it's another thing to watch out for. For example, one of the speedrunning tech that you do is you actually go to French, because French is about 10 seconds faster. So <laughs> you're basically playing a Canadian-made game in the French language that's about Mexican luchadors. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So something that's kind of new to this run is uh, they discovered something that's kind of like a wrong warp. And it revolves around like opening up the uh, pause menu when you shouldn't be able to and accessing the main menu. Ugh. So again, obviously I'm still very new to this. So don't expect any super awesome runs yet. As you can see, you have a jump, you have attacks, stuff like that. Nothing really interesting happens right now until I get to the mask, except for him that I'm going to do a warp, like I mentioned before. Ugh, if I can do it. Jeez. Come on. There we go. Jeez. That was really bad. Then we go to options, then we quit out. Then we do new game, normal. And it looks like we started the game over, but we're actually going to quit, and we end up now at the far end of the town. Now, that doesn't seem like much right now, but it actually skips out a large portion of the beginning of the game. There's like a small tutorial section that we skip using that. Sorry it raised the volume a little bit. Um, it went from 1 to 2, but there wasn't really much I could do about that. This also becomes incredibly useful later on because we need to return to this town in quick order from basically across the map. Uh, all told, if the estimates are pretty accurate, and it seems like they are, uh, this glitch saves about three minutes, I believe, over the course of it, and you use it to great use about three times in the run. Basically, this Mexican Skeletor kills me. Now I need to go get a magical mask to bring me back to life. And obviously, since I'm new to the route, um, I have a lot more splits than I should. <laughs> now, another thing. So, rolling is faster than walking, as is the case with many games that are good. Uh, you have a movement form that is faster <laughs> than the actual normal running. shit. <laughs> Obviously I'm very good at this game. This tutorial unfortunately so far we have no way to skip. And by we I mean the guac immunity basically. As they like to be called. So the reason I'm jumping a lot is while rolling is faster than walking, it would be kind of a bitch to have to keep rolling, and I think your speed remains constant if you jump during the roll. 
Right now we're switching over to a different costume. The costume is what's more important, not the player. The girl is, as far as I can tell, pretty much the same as Juan, uh, who's your main character. Uh, the main difference, though, is we want the suit, and since hers form of this suit, uh, since her form of this suit is easier to get to in the menus than Juan's, we use her. Uh, the suit does basically like a double damage type of thing. And, uh, but you take double damage in return, basically. However, that's not such a big deal to us because death is not a big deal in this game. Ugh. And then I get hit like a scrub. So the thing about the roll mechanic is, in addition to making you move faster, it also obviously can be used to dodge things, as I'm sure you've been picking up on, you've been watching. So this is the first mini mechanics. This is basically arenas. Um, There's more efficient ways to do these arenas, but as I said, I'm still scrub this game. For example, I thought that you could break that pinata there. Ugh. Okay, this is the first special move that we get. It's basically a show where you can, um, you get special moves throughout the game that you can use to in order to gain access to new areas, a la Metroidvania, rather a la Metroid in general. I'm gonna turn on the light here. And funny enough, you get them in pretty much the same way. You have to break Chozo statues in order to get access. Ugh, that was real bad. Ugh, wow. So this is the bad side, is you'll notice that I'm turning red. Basically when you run out of stamina, you can't do special moves, and that's indicated by you turning red. So a big part of this game is also managing your stamina, since you won't be getting most of the power-ups in order to increase it. Come on, get up. I'm obviously not doing this the most optimal of ways. Now after every arena, it is noteworthy that you basically get access to a, um, a pinata afterward that gives you, you know, money. However, you really don't need a lot of money in order to complete the game. Like, and there's not a lot that you can get out of it in general. Ugh. Is there a Richter type special moves that you can move with? Um, yeah, kind of a lot easier than that. Like, you notice that I'm doing the rooster uppercut, which is the thing where it turns red and I do an upward kick with her. Um, that's. You have moves that are similar to that that basically allow you to go in multiple directions. Uh, that's going to be really short. 
yeah. So you can get back up there if you plan your jump out well enough. Ugh. Damn, didn't quite get up there. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a lot of very, very tight jumps. But uh, as you get access to more and more special moves, you gain more and more mobility. Like right now, I just have the uppercut, but later on, there's the um, ability to move forward with a special attack. A uh, headbutt, which just does a lot of damage. Uh, there's a frog splash that you can use for some certain exploits. You get a lot of mobility options in this game, which is quite nice. Right now, they just need to teach me how to play the game, because I'm terrible at it. But you guys already knew that just from seeing me. Uh, what am I doing now? Okay, yeah, I'm headed to the magic head. I have to pay attention to my splits to kind of tell me where to go. And so that I know where to split. So these Olmec heads are basically your teleporters in the game to get from place to place. You don't use them too often because of the uh, the wrong warp, but they're still useful in certain places. Actually gonna see if I can talk to this guy. Yeah, okay. Normally I would have to run backwards to talk to him, so I guess that's good. So here's the next mechanic that we're introduced to. It's a dual world mechanic. Basically things change inside this realm. Um, if you ever played Soul Reaver or the Legacy of Kane series games, kind of similar to that. Uh, later on you get the ability to actually freely go between the spirit realm and the normal world, but for now we uh, are stuck with those portals. Something else that's really cool about this game too is there's starting to be an emergence of a one player two controller strats for basically manipulating the other possible player in this game. Um, currently Fry Deal, the world record holder for quite a few of the categories is working on those strats, but they're actually really promising for a lot of things. Like this room, you can save about four seconds using two player uh, uh, mechanics. I think I'm supposed to go this way first. Hopefully you can also tell that there's a semblance of a combo system in this game. 
And it's pretty decently deep. I mean, by no means is it perfect, but it's okay. I probably should add a split here as well for the wall jump. So here's our next ability. Um, basically, you had the choice between getting this first or the headbutt first. Actually, I think you need this to get the headbutt. So now you have access to a Ninja Gaiden style wall jump, which is kind of nice. The nice thing is, with the exception of the one move that we do not get in the speed run, this run actually has, like... Um... Sorry. This run actually has a use for every move in the game outside of its normal use, which is really cool. I always like to see that when um, designers put in the time to make a very interesting mechanic have more weight to it. And they definitely accomplished that. So using two-player strats, you can kill these guys a lot faster as well. And I'm hoping I don't die here, because, yeah, that would be real bad. Didn't mean to break that second chest. I meant to turn around and break the first one, but oh well. So that was unfortunate. In addition to everything else, um, this game actually allows you to do some enemy manipulation for their patterns. They aren't really brain dead like Soten, even though they appear in the same places. Uh, there's quite a few different patterns that can happen, and many are very disadvantageous, mostly the dodges. When an enemy dodges you, you can get really screwed over. Okay. So I want to buy... Um, that? Yes, okay. <laughs> I need to learn how to read French. And we want that. So basically what I did there is I bought a, another stamina chunk, so now I have the ability to um, do more moves. And um, do more moves, like one after the other. I also got access to uh, faster stamina regen. Hopefully I'm going the right way. I'm pretty sure I am, but... Wow. So I'm bad at this section right here. So yeah. There we go. That was good. But yeah, there's a lot that a person who's really willing to put in the time can optimize when it comes to this game. Shit. <laughs> so basically, red skeletons are fucking assholes, <laughs> if you haven't noticed already. They just have a habit of throwing bones exactly where they need to to kill you at any given time.
You'll also notice that there's roll cancelling on the uh, headbutt. And really all special moves actually you can roll cancel out of. So I mean they really took a lot of cues from um, fighting games. And I'm taking cues from being awful at this. The other thing that you can do with uh, two controller strats is when you reach places like this where Ala, or where uh, Tostada shows up, if you have two players you can actually skip all of her lines, <laughs> which is kind of funny. So this is your first like boss type of encounter here, um, but it's really more of just a obstacle course. You know, just really getting you acclimatized to moving in a hurry. First boss down. And it only took us much, much longer than any of the real runners for this game. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I guess everybody's got to start somewhere, right? Considering that this is only like maybe my third run. I'd say that's okay. Actually less, this is actually my second run. So as you saw before, I had to uh, reset Okay, I shouldn't have broken that heart piece, because that costed me about seven seconds. But whatever, maybe we'll end up getting a heart later on in the run or something, if we're finding we're having trouble surviving. Shit. Okay, so we need to head to Santa Lucida. So... After this scene in the bar is going to be pretty much exactly... Well, actually, never mind. It's not going to be right after the bar. So, completely forget what I was saying. <laughs> we still got a little bit more to go. So here we meet a boss that's actually... Actually, probably one of my favorite characters in the game, just because he's such an idiot, and he kind of looks nice or kind of looks cool, you know, that type of idea. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you basically skip this guy, <laughs> which is kind of funny, unless you're doing the 100% speed run. We can just completely ignore him, and he just goes off into the sunset. So that was, that was a little bit of a late split, but that's okay. So now we have the ability to body slam. Um, this actually has some use. Um, primarily, it actually gives you a small boost in height, so you can reach areas uh, that you might normally miss with just a rooster uppercut. Ugh. And there was a time where I should have done the frog splash in order to get that extra height. But that happens. Okay, so I'm going to try to get the arena skip here. You can actually skip the next arena that I'm going to do. Um, I haven't really trained it at all. And it is kind of a hard thing to do. Yeah, I just completely screwed it up. You're basically supposed to grab the edge there or dodge cancel out of your move. And um, 
You can completely skip this. Right now, these guys are being real assholes right now with their grenades. Shit. So basically, you need to grab the green grenades and not get hit by the red ones. Why are you not throwing grenades? Throw grenades. So normally that would be quite abysmal. Uh, okay. So that's not supposed to happen normally. <laughs> Uh, normally, they're supposed to uh, be a little bit more forgiving there. Basically, you're supposed to throw that uh, the spiny armadillo at the cactus, so you don't need to wait for a, a green grenade. But apparently, I don't know the count for damage on it. I believe we're supposed to get another um, stamina regen. Oh god. <laughs> That's how you're supposed to do it. That's really dumb. Like, I don't know. I was... I should not have gotten a hit there. Rather, I should not have been stupid enough to get hit there. Because I decided to use my rooster uppercut to get into this room, I got punished pretty heavily for it. That wasn't too bad. But yeah, getting killed inside of arenas is a surefire way to lose a ton of time. Oh yeah, so the shields that are showing up around them, I basically have to use a specific move in order to um, to break them. So if they have a green shield, I need to use the frog splash. If they have a yellow one, I need to use the headbutt, you know, a rooster uppercut for the red ones. And that kind of gets built on later. Later on, they get combo shields. Like, you need to do a certain amount of hits. So coming up pretty soon, I'm going to get access to Chicken Power. And Chicken Power is really nice because basically allows you to get to new areas in the game um, normally. But one of the really nice things about it as well is that it actually is, as far as we know, like the fastest normal movement speed that you can do. Uh, you can move faster with a move called Goat Fly, but you have to have some kind of... You need to have conditions met in order to use Goat Fly. So Chicken is what you use for a large portion of the speed run in order to move quickly. This is not a chicken, obviously. It looks like a little dragon because of the outfit I have on. The only real downside to the chicken is you don't jump as high, and you obviously can't really attack anything, so...
And you'll get to see that fairly soon, just how weak you are in combat as a chicken. So next they're showing you the new mechanic of basically the plants that can turn into spikes. This is a damage boost. Oops. Or it should have been. There we go. I always kind of mess up on that because it's actually you're supposed to jump after you fall off slightly. At least that's what it seems like. Wow. Obviously, I still have a lot of <laughs> improvement to make on my chicken fighting. Okay, this is actually a pretty notorious part of the speedrun. Um, if you get a bad cycle on these plants, they can just really dick you hard. And make it so that you can't get through. Um, if you get, or as you get uh, more used to it, you can actually damage boost through that room, which is kind of nice. Uh, now we have the ability to turn into the chicken and out of it, but we're actually going to wrong warp to get back to where we need to go now, which is to fight the girl. So this is the second boss fight and probably the first thing that you would really consider a boss fight. Uh, sh shoot. I accidentally hit. Okay. You're supposed to deny her there, but now that I got that, I basically take a section of damage, which is kind of dumb of me. Shit. Ugh. Right now I'm playing really poorly. And again, that's kind of to be expected just because I'm not used to this game yet. So once we get her to half health, she goes into phase two. <laughs> and now we're in phase three. Fuck. <laughs> uh. All right, so now we got her into the new phase. She's deciding to be a real bitch right now. God damn it. Ugh. So now that we've taken her, we can actually reassign our uh, wrong warp location to a more useful place now. And we're going to do that once we head to the Tula Tree, which is our next place. Now we have the ability to swap dimensions freely, by the way. And as you can see, there are some walls that appear and some that, you know, disappear based on which dimension you're in.
And as I mentioned before, we now have, or we've had access to the Poyo power. Oh yeah, we're supposed to go to the two light tree. So now that we're at the Tule tree, we're going to go ahead and set off the checkpoint here. Or at least the uh, teleporter. And we're going to use it to go to Santa Lucita. Now that we went to Santa Lucita, we're going to go ahead and set our new wrong warp destination. Options. Fuck. <laughs> I messed up. <sighs> so basically what you have to do is you basically have to hit select and enter the door on kind of the same frame. There we go. So we want to go to options, then out, then continue. There we go. Now we're back at the two lay tree. Oops. And I always have a lot of issues with this room in particular. Mainly just because those guys are jerks. I secretly think nobody likes them though, so I'm pretty okay with hating them as well. Ugh, okay. <laughs> so I just completely screwed up on that speed tech. I was basically going to show off the... Um, how the green slam gives you a little bit more height on jumps, but I was in the wrong phase, basically. So Chupacabras are pretty much the worst enemy in this game. <laughs> Like, easily on par with any of the Castlevania enemies that seem to piss people off. I mean, there are worse gatekeepers in this game, but there's... It seems like there's nothing as consistently infuriating to fight against as they are. Ugh, okay. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, I'm so bad at this room. There's actually a lot of rooms that I need a lot of practice on, but there's ones like this in particular that are just real issues for me. Fuck. Ugh. 
Эх. So this introduces us to bomb type enemies. Um, and right off the bat they just start throwing the freaking shielded ones right at you. Which is kind of cruel. Uh, there we go. I know there's a faster way to tackle that using the rooster uppercut, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> That's really my experience with this game in a nutshell, is I know certain things, but I just don't know. Like, I know you can do certain things, I just don't know how to do them. <laughs> so now we have access to double jump, and now we can really start to break the game wide open. Um, normally you're supposed to get an ability that allows you to run up walls, but using an ability that they're calling uh, wall hopping currently, or walloping. Uh, by the way, we're going to do a wrong warp. <laughs> using a uh, wall hopping, you're able to get up to places that you shouldn't be able to. And we're going to use that to great effect right now, actually. Um, we're going to get access to the Temple of War before we should be able to. Normally we would have to go through the rest of the Tule tree. But thanks to a little bit of clever use of things, that's not going to be an issue. I'm actually going to get this health. Normally you're not supposed to get any health during the course of this run. But I think given that this is my first run, getting a little bit of help or a little bit of health might help with some of the more difficult portions of the run. And as I get better, I can always cut it out of my route. So there's an example of the wall hopping, as I was saying before. We're going to get another stamina chunk here. And here's normally where you would really have to kind of climb up the wall using your abilities. But uh, yeah, we're just going to completely ignore that that's a problem. Again, getting a little bit of extra money that's not normally in the route, but it's in the way, it's not a big deal. Oh wait, no, we're supposed to go straight. <laughs> uh. So this is introducing the combos that I was talking about before. Also introducing these idiots. These idiots that kill me. See, normally they want you to just fucking ride those slow-moving platforms, but with wall hopping you can kind of get away with that. And 
Now they're introducing the big bombs that take more than a few hits. That arena went a lot better than it normally goes. <laughs> Once again, just uh, if I can do it. Wow, come on. Wall hopping, just completely breaking the game wide open. Ugh. Yeah. So there's a way to get up that way, a way that I was kind of trying to do, but I don't really know how to do it yet. Ah. Hmm. So I know you can make that jump. Okay, you short hop. That's what it is. And that actually saves, I think, about like four seconds, so it's actually worth going for if you can consistently get it. Oops. Shit. <laughs> uh, I kind of psyched myself out on what I wanted to do there. God damn it. Sometimes you press dodge in this game and it really feels unresponsive. It's kind of frustrating. And we're just going to completely ignore again what they want us to do. Ugh. Or perhaps we're going to completely scrub it up, you know? See, this is the big problem that I have with wall hopping, is um, kind of wiring my brain to go one way or the other. Because it's different inputs depending on which side you're trying to climb with. And hope you like Flameface because this is going to be the last time that you get to see him. We get access to another key ability, and we're going to go ahead and wrong warp back, basically, at this point. Because now we have all the abilities that we need in order to break any shield in the game, and we have all our mobility options through them. So now we can make our way... Whoa, okay. <laughs> Almost went the entirely wrong way there. Shit. 
What an asshole. <laughs> uh, okay, that's not how this is supposed to go. What's supposed to happen is these guys aren't supposed to be assholes. And they're supposed to let me continue on my way. Alright, nice. That's a skip, actually. Normally that guy talks to you a little bit, but we were able to get past it. And that's actually the first time that I've done that, so... Yay for small miracles. Oops. That was not good. Fuck. This arena is a little bit infamous for being kind of a bitch. Another kind of rough arena. It's really at this point that the arenas really start to ramp up in difficulty. I believe this is the one where I'm supposed to change costumes to the skeleton. Now the reason that we changed costumes to the skeleton, the skeleton has infinite stamina. And we're going to use that to great effect in the next area because it's very stamina dependent. Whoops. Shit. Fuck. <laughs> the uh, downside to the skeleton is that you can't recover your stamina when you're using it. Or not your stamina, but your uh, health. And when a single death will send me all the way back a very long way, this is particularly problematic. But luckily we got there. Nice. 
Now we switch back to the Alabrije costume for some arenas. These are problematic ones for me. Because I am obviously not the best at wall hops, at wall hops yet. So I always have a lot of trouble with these ones. Shit. Especially when I get hit. Yeah, this is basically death. Damn it. Since I'm at this point, I'm actually going to lower the music volume again. There we go. God, this is so fucking loud to me. Hopefully it's not blowing your guys' ears out as well. Oh, oh my god. Here comes another kind of difficult part of the run, getting over these fucking spikes. Uh, sure? Shit. So I might die here. All right. So I guess not. We're making we're making good progress from my old run, but we still have some of the hardest sections to go, particularly in the climbing. Uh, there's places where you have to do an extraordinary amount of wall hopping. And that's usually the barrier for most people getting into the run, from what I understand. Shit. This is kind of a rough part as well, honestly. Shit, because if you fuck up, then that happens. <laughs> Ugh, okay. Fuck! So we're gonna break this to give us a little bit more health. Again, normally you wouldn't do that, but again, this is our first time, so... Let's try to reduce the amount of stress on us. This is kind of another bitch part, especially the first time you play the game. Two, three, 
four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Huh. And I almost screwed it up there. <laughs> but yeah, screwing up at that part is a enormous loss of time. So that's why it's integral that you don't screw up there. Oh. All right. So here's another boss fight. Hopefully I can do this well. It's Honestly, in my opinion, this is probably the most difficult boss fight in the game to execute correctly. And I just... And I screwed up on it already. Then I ran right into his fire. Ugh. You really don't want to be in um, chicken mode at the start of fights. Because if you are, then you have to deal with... Uh, Because if you start in chicken mode, then you have to deal with um, basically finding a good time in order to transform. And he's being a real cunt right now. <laughs> Flame lingers so long. So yeah, I'm basically getting fucking tooled right now. Ugh, especially when he keeps doing that shit. Okay, so we finally beat him. Took a lot longer than it should have, but what are you gonna do, you know? So now we start to get to the end of the game and the really tough parts are now gonna start making themselves vastly apparent. That being said, this is a lot better time than the first time I ran this. Three hours is an approximation of my real time based on what I got for my in-game timer. We technically didn't need that either, but again, any stamina that we can get helps. And we do have extra money as well, so if we feel like we want to get more health, we can, perhaps. This is a real bitch of an arena. And you'll see why in just a minute when these guys' friends show up. 
shit. What the fuck, man? Fuck! <laughs> but yeah, yellow guys are pretty much the worst. <laughs> because they dodge fucking everything at times. And when you give them a combo shield or any type of shield, they become disasters. So I was supposed to break all of those, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Oh my god, are you serious, game? Fuck. <laughs> I totally forgot what room this was. And now I'm out of stamina. God damn it. <sighs> So we're going to tag that in case something goes wrong in the next few rooms, which it definitely can. Oops, wrong sequence. There we go. Okay, this is the first major hard climb. Fuck. And I screwed it up at the end.
so I'm giving myself a little break here. Uh. I think this is where I switch to skeleton. Nope, it's not. <laughs> I take that back. So I've been trying to pioneer a new strategy here, even for the like more seasoned players of this game. Um, it basically involves... basically involves using a um, skeleton at different points in the route than is normal. And right now this is not even required what I'm doing, but I want to get used to trying it. Shit. <laughs> Alright. Let's try this again. Fuck! Okay, we're just gonna do this the normal way, I guess. Because it doesn't want to cooperate. And by the normal way, I mean I'm gonna invent my own way. Fuck. It's not fucking accepting my inputs. Wow, that is... I'm getting put so on tilt right now, just because of how stupid this is all being. Like, not the game, but like my headset. Like this is, it's literally blaring in my ears right now. It's. There we go. is our first introduction to the lightning skeletons. Um, probably the most infamous enemies in this game for ruining runs, um, as you can see. If they take off, you are in such big trouble. It's not even funny. And yet it is so easy for them to do that. Oh, fuck. Dude, fuck this. I gotta- I have to turn this down. This is fucking driving me nuts. Why is this so fucking loud? I put it at like, two volume. Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> there we go. Not the best, but it'll do. So I found the only way that's safe through this room from watching other people is to just bite the bullet and just stay checking and run straight. I don't know why I did that, because it was much easier to just switch to her. This is where I was kind of trying to pioneer the um, bones suit. Because in these vertical climbing segments, if you mess up once, you basically run out of stamina really hard. And running out of stamina is completely unacceptable in this area, quite frankly. So by just making a slight change to the course, we can actually use this to also gain some extra life on this section, which is pretty notorious as well. I just got hit twice, which is pretty crazy for that early. Apparently Red Esqualitos are on their game today. But had I been in El Abrehe, or El Ahibre costume, I would be dead right now. But because I have access to the Esqualito costume, um, I have a little bit more health to play with, even though it doesn't regen. And that allows me to get through that. And the really nice thing about this is, as far as I can tell, there is absolutely no trade-off for this. Um, because this whole section... You don't fight anything overly relevant. Why did that... <laughs> there we go. This is the other devastating climb. And I hope that I learned enough from my last time doing it that I'm able to get it taken care of. Fuck. <laughs> Okay, I think that's... <laughs> yeah, I need to reset my climb now. I have no more mobility, do I? Nope, okay. See, that's the downside. This particular climb um, requires you to kind of ration out your special abilities to make your way over. That's why I'm taking such great pains to get over that portion without any use. And really what just happened there was me screwing up with <laughs> that particular one by using the uppercut. Uh, sure. Okay. <sighs> okay, I gotta rest my fingers. 
If I fall, this is going to really suck. Oh, God. Okay, nice. Ugh. Fuck! Don't put me anywhere crazy. Okay. Oh my god, did it just put me... Oh, fuck. This is real bad. Bad to the point where, I don't know. <laughs> I would not fucking do this if this were a serious run. What's up, Al? Basically hating my life right now because I just screwed up on something and now I have to do the hardest part of this game pretty much again. So, yeah. How is it that this thing is so far? Behind everything else. <sighs> Why are you not fucking working? Okay, so now we're going to switch to Elabrihe again. <laughs> I went into Soten mode there for a second. Ugh. This is another one of the more nefarious um, battle arenas. Shit. Mainly because of shit like that happening.
shit. Alright, we got through it. It was a real fucking bitch, but we got through it. Okay, back to Escalita in order to do these rooms. So because these things only take one hit, um, having stamina is actually preferable here compared to damage. Because well, like all you're really trying to do is just kill things in an efficient manner. And probably the best way to do that is by using stamina. And of course, you get access to stamina for this climb. Which is another one of the main reasons why I really like using Skeleton here. It allows you to deal with a lot of the bullshit that they throw at you during this climb. Without having to worry about issues of running out of stamina like fuck now I'm totally far behind type of thing. Right now this Bone Hulk has like really got it out for me though. And once you're done with it, boom. You have access to Ali Hebra again. <sighs> so that took way longer than it should have. Okay, so now, whoops, we don't want that. Uh, can we buy anything? Recoup endurance? Sure. There we go. So with that little extra money, we can get another endurance um, restoration thing. We wouldn't normally have this, but eh. Fuck it. <laughs> so this is the last boss of the game. Hopefully we can kill him fairly easily. So we're going to fight Mexican Skeletor first. Ugh. Let's see what we can do about that. This guy is another kind of skill-based fight. Um, I really don't think that he's as bad as uh, Jaguar Javier, but he's still pretty rough because he kills you in one hit like that. I wasn't sure if I was in the right phase or not to be fighting him. Alright, nice. So let's see how fast we can kill second form of Calica. So we're not going to get the 130 that I was kind of hoping for, but that's fine. Um, we got an enormous PB from our previous one. Three hours, I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but it's at least two and a half was my previous that's on the leaderboard. So this should be a pretty substantial PB. Hello. 
Ugh, oh, I went too early there. That was my fault. Nice. Oops. Fuck. Uh, how do I go back? Damn it! <laughs> this isn't right. Oh well, I'll just go back over the... It should not be done yet. I need to be able to touch her first. Fuck. Okay. It's okay. I'll just go back over it. It'll probably end up being like 132.30. Or something like that. Time ends normally when you do this, so... Yep. And then that's the end of the game. But I'm gonna skip ahead, see what my in-game time was. 129? So, sub-130, and I'm in the top 50 on just two completed runs. I mean, I guess that's gotta account for something, right? Eh. It's okay. Let's go ahead and um, switch it back to English so I can read this a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our leaderboards. So the next guy's a 127, which I can easily do. Like, I seriously lost, like, seven minutes off of fucking up. Well, I didn't lose seven minutes. I probably, yeah, I might have lost, like, four minutes off of fucking up the, and dying after the long staggered climb. So that should be pretty easy to do. The question is, is what happens when I get to, like, 115. At 115, I'll be top 30-ish. Which is reasonable. See, most of the people that I watch play, like, uh, Smalley started getting into it pretty uh, recently. So she's got a pretty decent time. She does a 100% with her, I guess, boyfriend, though. So, like, she has a background in it, even though she just started running it. Uh, Bagel Thief, I've seen him run before as well. Um, basically, Bagel Thief and Protong... Like, I watch Frideo and Protong probably the most. I've seen Bagel Thief. I've seen Wesker as well, which is, I think, a bat resource. Or a bat energy resource. But yeah, like... I feel good about this. There's definitely a lot of leeway that I can make. 